Welcome to everything I'm Troy's MCA and today in this video I'm going to show you how to use Visual Studio Code for writing, compiling and running C++ programs. So watch this video till end and let's get started. So there's a small thing that I want to clear out before starting with the video is that Visual Studio Code is just a code editor so it cannot run any programs on itself. So we need to install the desired compilers or interpreters of the desired language so that Visual Studio Code can use those and then compile and run your programs. So same goes with the C++ thing also. We need to install the C++ compiler so that we can link Visual Studio Code with it and then compile our programs on it. So in this video, I'm going to use the MinGW compiler, which is one of the most popular and powerful C++ compilers out there. And to install MinGW, I'm going to use the msys2 utility. So we will be first installing msys2 utility and then we will be installing the MinGW compiler into it. And then we will be linking the MinGW compiler with VS Code to run our programs. So let's open up a web browser. And there you need to type msys2. And now you need to head over to the official site of m 2 that is www.msys2.org. Now we are on the official site of m 2 One note for 32-bit users is that m 2 is not supported for the 32-bit operating systems so it can only work on 64-bit systems. So even if you download an older version of m 2 for 32-bit system, the package manager is not going to work. So to set up MinGW for 32-bit systems, I have made a separate video so you can watch that video in order to set up MinGW for 32-bit operating systems. I am not going to show the setup of MinGW for 32-bit systems because I wanted to keep this video simple. So assuming you are using a 64-bit operating system, let's download m 2 So scroll a bit and then you need to click on this button. So this will download the latest version of the m 2 installer on your system. Because I have already downloaded m 2 installer before, I am not going to download it again. So once your download is complete, you need to install m 2 So you need to go to your downloads folder and then you need to double click on this installer to install m 2 on your system. Now the setup wizard of m 2 is in front of us. Let's click on next, click on next, click on next and it will start to install m 2 on your system. It will take some time so you can have your tea. So as you can see that m 2 has been completely installed on our system. Let's click on finish and it will launch the m 2 terminal. So let's close the file explorer window. So you can see that m 2 has been installed. We need to install the main GW compiler because m 2 is just a utility. But before that we need to update m 2 packages. So for that type pacman hyphen s y u. So this will update the m 2 packages. It will take some time so wait for it to finish. Make sure that your computer has an active internet connection because it is going to download all of these system files. Now type Y and press enter. It is going to download some more system files. So wait for it to finish. And now again type Y and then press enter. So this will close the m 2 terminal. We need to open the m 2 terminal again. So go to start and scroll and then click on m 2 64 bit folder and then click on m 2 msys so it will open up the terminal again now we need to run the same command again so that is pacman space hyphen syu it is going to download some more files and libraries that are needed for m 2 to work so type y and press enter it will take some time so wait for it to finish so the setup of m 2 is complete now we can install the compiler on it. So for that you need to type the following command that is Now press enter and now it will ask you to download these all libraries. So just press enter and now press Y and then press enter. So it will again take some time and it will start to download the files required for the MinGW compiler. So m 2 encountered with the problem. It might happen to you as well in some cases. So what you can do is you need to run the same command again that we just ran before. And it will start to download the files from the previous point. So it will not download all of the files again. 
but will download only the files that have not been downloaded. So it will continue from the previous breakpoint. These kind of errors happen due to network issues, so there's no need to worry about. We can just run the command again and it will start from the previous point only. So finally after decades, MinGW has been installed on MC2, but it has not been configured yet. So if we run G++, it will say command not found. We need to configure MinGW, so for that you need to type pacman space hyphen capital S and then space pkgconf. So when you type this command, press enter and mc 2 will update its package manager with all of the packages that it has installed. So press Y and then press enter. So the package manager has been updated. But even if now if we run G++, it will say that command not found. So the compiler has been installed on our system, but it has not been yet added to our path. So when we open command prompt and then if we type G++, it will say that it is not recognized as an internal or external command. So for that, what we need to do is we need to open this PC and then we need to go to our C drive and then you need to go to msys64 folder and then you need to go to mingw64. This is the compiler that we have installed and then you need to go to bin and here you can see that there are a lot of files present and there is also our g++.exe executable file. So what we need to do is we need to add this folder path to our path variables. So click on this address bar and then you need to right click on it and then you need to click on copy. So it will be copied to our clipboard. Now we need to go to path. So go to start and then you need to search for path and then you need to click on this and it will directly open up this particular window. If you can't find this, what you can do is you need to go to this PC and then you need to right click on the blank side and then you need to click on properties and on the left side you need to click on advanced system settings and it will open up the very same thing that we have opened just now. So now you need to click on environment variables button and then you need to double click on this path option. So when you double click on it, you will be having this small dialog box in front of you. Click on new and then right click and then click on paste. So it will paste the thing that we have copied that is the path to the main GW compiler. Click on OK. Click on OK and click on OK again. Now when you open command prompt and if you type G++ then you can see that it is giving us the output as fatal error no input files compilation terminated. So this means that the compiler has been added to our path. Now we are ready to go with VS code. Let's close everything. Now we need to open VS code. So go to start and then you need to open VS code. So this is a fresh installation of VS code. Now in order to set up C++ in VS code, we need to install some extensions. So in the activity bar, click on this extensions button. And now we need to install some extensions. So first we will be installing the C C++ extension. So just type C++. And then what we need to do is we need to install this extension. So just click on the install button. So this will add the C++ functionality to the VS code. Now the second extension that we need to install is this that is better C++ syntax. Click on install and it will also get installed onto your VS code. Now the third and the last extension that we are going to install is the code runner. So just go to the search bar and type code runner and press enter. Now we need to install this extension that is code runner. So click on install button again and it will install this code runner extension on VS code. So all of the extensions that we require to run C++ code has been installed. Now let's create a C++ file. So let's close the tabs. So click on file, click on new text file. And now we need to save this file as a CPP file so that the VS code can recognize that it is a C++ file. So click on file, click on save. And now we need to choose the location where we want to save our file as. So I will save my file to desktop. So go to desktop and then give it any name. So let's give it a name as main.cpp and then click on save. So now our file has been saved as C++ file. 
Now Visual Studio Code is asking me to install recommended extensions for C++ but I'll not install it because we have already installed all of the extensions that we require. Now I will write a very basic C++ program. So you can see that the autocomplete of VS Code is now working very fine with C++. Now let's save this file and now we need to run this file. So what we need to do is you need to click on run and debug button on the activity bar and then you need to click on run and debug button. It will ask me to choose the environment. So we will be using C++ GDB slash LLDB. Click on that and now it will ask me the compiler that we want to use. So as we have installed the main GW compiler, so we will be choosing the first option which has the path to C colon slash mc64 slash min gw64 slash bin slash g++ dot exe so this is the c++ compiler executable that we have installed just now so click on that and now in the bottom panel you can see that the build is running so now you can see that a hell lot of output has been generated in the console but we don't want these things so we'll just close this and now we'll be running the code with the help of the code runner extension that we installed so on the top, click on this drop down menu and then click on run code. So when you click on that, you can see that our output has been generated. Now one thing to note at this point is that whenever you run the code again, it will not clear up the output from the previous run and it will just add the new output with new line. So if you don't want this to happen, if you want to clear the console each time you run the code, for that you need to set up some things. So click on this manage button and then go to settings. Click on this search bar and then you need to type code runner. Now the first option that says clear previous output. So you need to check this box. In my computer it is appearing as the very first option. In yours it might appear somewhere below so you need to search for that. So this is the setting that we need to turn on. So click on this uh, check box and enable it. So what this will do is it will clear the console each time the code has been run. Now let's run the CPP file again. So let's close this settings uh, tab here. Now again click on this drop down menu and then click on run code. So you can see that the previous output has been deleted and the new output has been added to the console. So this is how you can run a C++ program on VS code. So one information that I want to give it to you is that once you have selected run code from here then you don't need to select it again you can just click on this play icon and it will be running run code option by default and a bonus for you might be the shortcut key for running the code so the shortcut is control alt n so whenever you press this combination it will automatically compile and run the code one more optional thing that might help you as well is saving the file before running. So let me just show it to you how you can achieve that. So let's make some changes to our code. So instead of hello, I will be printing hi. But this time I'll not be saving the code. If you click on the play icon again, you can see that we are getting the output from the previous code that we had, but not from the current code. This is because we have not saved the file. So if you want that the files get automatically saved whenever you press on this play button what you can do is you can configure that also in settings so go to manage click on settings and again you need to search for code runner you need to scroll a bit and then you need to check this box here in this option that says save a file before run what this will do is it will save the current file before running it so if we check this box and we go to our file and if we click on this run button again, you can see that our file has been saved and we get the output from our new code. So let's do some more changes and I have not saved the program again. So if I click on this play icon, you can see that the program automatically gets saved and we get the output from the new code. So this is a very good thing that might help many of you. But if you don't want to save the files automatically, you can just uncheck this box that says save file before run. One more thing that might be useful is directly running the C++ file without opening it. So for that, we have to open a folder. So click on folder. And then we need to open any folder. So I'll just create a new folder here. 
and I'll name it as CPP and I'll select this folder. And now let's create a C++ program here. So click on this icon to create a new file and then give it a name as main.cpp and press enter. Now I'll write a program here again. I'll save this program. So what I will do is I'll create another file named file.cpp and I'll write the same program but I'll change the output message. And now we have two files present in a folder. So now let's compile both of the files. So on the left hand side in the explorer window, you can right click on the file that you want to compile and then you can click on run code. So when you click on that, it will automatically run that file. So let's compile the main.cpp file now. So right click on that, click on run and then it will run the main.cpp file. So if you are having multiple files to deal with, you can directly run those files without having to open them in the editor by right clicking on that and then clicking on run. So this will run the code automatically and show you the output. One important note for the code runner extension is that if your program needs user input, then its default console won't help you for that. So let's consider this program. It requires the user to enter a number and then it will print that number to the output screen. So let's run this program and you can see that if we try to enter anything into this, it is not going to display or it is not going to take that input. So you can't give user input here while the program is running. But if you have a text file containing all of the inputs and test cases, then it's very good. But if you want to give inputs interactively while the program is running, then you'll need to do some modifications. So let's first stop this console. So click on this square button to stop the console from running. And then you can click on this manage button and then you need to click on settings. Now in the search bar, you need to type code runner terminal. And then you need to click on this checkbox to enable this option that says run in terminal. So what this will do is it will not launch the console of the code runner, but it will run the program in the terminal itself. So it will be much like the manual approach for compiling and running a C++ program. So let's get back to our file and let's click on the play button again. So click on this button and now you can see that our program is running in the VS code terminal itself. The program is waiting for our input. So let's give it a number. So let's give it 45 and then if we press enter and you can see that we have got the desired output. So this approach is good as far as you're not doing competitive programming. But for competitive programming, it's better that you use the input file for all of the test cases and then run the code in the default console so that you can analyze the time taken to execute the code. So this is a very important note that I thought to share it with you before ending the video so that if you're stuck with this thing, you know what you need to do. So this was all for this video. I hope you are benefited from this. If I have missed something out, you can let me know in the comment section. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.